Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 73 of Daryl20's Let's Play series. Uh, I, as you can probably tell, took my automation upgrades out of my industrial apiaries. Uh, last episode, uh, we managed to automate a bit of mushrooms so that we could get our lifespan upgrades here, which has made it such that we are getting way more bees way more frequently, which is great. Uh, and I'm loving that aspect. Uh, today, I'd like to get into some genetic manipulation stuff with Gendistry. As you can see, I've got Gendistry up on the, on the right-hand side. Um, so... There's a couple of approaches we can take to bees, and I think uh, it would be cool to check out some of these things. So let's get started uh, taking a look. So one of the things we're definitely gonna want is labware. So I'm teaching our thing how to make that. And blank gene samples, that would be kinda cool to have too. Um, so let's get some machines here. Uh, there's mutagen producers, mutatrons, industrial apiaries we already checked out, genetic imprinters, genetic samplers, advanced mutatrons, protein liquefiers, DNA extractors, genetic transposers, the list goes on. It's insane. Uh, but we're going to play with most, if not all, of these machines at some point soon. Uh, so first thing we need to look at doing is one of these guys, uh, a mutagen padusa. Uh, do I want to put that right in there or do I just want to make one? I don't think I need more than one of these. So uh, let's do this. You need power modules. Have I taught you how to do power modules yet? I guess I haven't. Uh, so let's do that. Teach you how to do power modules. Uh, and then you're also going to need sturdy casings, which I'm pretty sure I did. We're going to want at least four of them. Recipes, please. So power modules aren't too bad. I can get like 10 of them, right? Sure, why not? Let's get some machines cooking. Uh, so to get that, we're also going to need a hopper, which needs some chests. And uh, that should be pretty darn close. We're also going to need a mutagen tank, which I don't think we need to have too many of these guys for. But we'll make a few. Uh, cool. And then we're going to need bronze gears. And in addition to that, I'll request like a bunch more bronze. That should hopefully give me most of what I need to get stuff going at this point. But a mutagen producer is step one. And uh, I haven't decided exactly where my, uh, my location will be. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, go up here for some of my... Um, bee breeding mutagen type stuff that I'm gonna do. I think that sounds good, right? Yeah. Um, so we can leave our bees outside for now, but at some point, like I said, I wanna build like a building that'll have a bunch of uh, stuff inside of it. But for now, we'll stick with you. Um, and I guess a wireless dude wouldn't be a terrible plan for now, just because this is like a kind of temporary setup. So this thing stores, wow, 5 million RF? Wireless suddenly seems like a bad idea. Let's do a uh, power cell. So we're going to want a power cell start and a power cell card start. And you're going to go ahead and get me a bunch of these things. Cool. Cool. Great. Okay. Uh, so you'll probably chill back here. We'll pop into our basement. Link up our power cell card. Linked to ID2. And we'll bring this upstairs. So now we can at least do, you know, 5,000 RF per tick or something like that. So you go into there, this thing can store 5 million RF now, and uh, I'm going to get some redstone energy conduits. Now we're talking, right? Yeah, all of you out. Now we're talking. Woot! Uh, so mutagen is your first step. Uh, and I might even move this over one, but we'll see. You can probably go into the corner, to be honest with you. Uh, mutagen producer. Because we're going to have another machine here anyway in a minute. And you can go there. It's the first step um, to producing what we want to get. So mutagen, this stuff, uh, I don't think it tells you exactly. But I know there's like a couple different things you can do to get mutagen. Uh, the, the most simple is uh, redstone. Throw some redstone blocks in there and it'll start producing mutagen. Um, dust works too, but blocks obviously produce more mutagen than dust, or at least it should. Uh, so that sounds cool. 
So as you can see, uh, we're quickly producing mutagen here. Well, quickly is maybe a little bit of a stretch. It ain't that quick, but you don't really use all that much mutagen. And this is what we're going to use, this resource, uh, along with power, to mutate our bees and create better bees. Um, and, and instead of um, the, the standard route of breeding them, which we'll talk about in a minute here, uh, we can use these machines to pretty much uh, get custom bees. So the next nifty machine we're gonna wanna take a look at for a moment for like a second, for like less than a second, is the Mutatron. Uh, this is the machine that allows you to combine two bee species and choose uh, the outcome of that uh, partnering, if you will. So in this example, uh, if we wanted to combine, for example, meadows and forest bees, we have the opportunity to breed that into a common bee. Um, Traditionally, what you would do is place that in an apiary and you'd place like a Meadows Princess with a forest drone and you'd have a 15% chance to come up with a common queen. Wah, wah, wah. That's slow and boring and takes a really long time because what's going to happen is you're not going to get a common queen. You're going to get uh, maybe partially a common queen and not so much a common queen. And sometimes you'll get a forest queen and sometimes you'll get a meadows queen and sometimes you'll get a forest and meadows queen. And you have to wait for them to die and uh, it's just uh, long, boring. Try it if you want, but I'm gonna go the fast route. And uh, to do that, we're gonna upgrade this Mutatron doop -a -doop -a -doop, uh, to something even better, the Advanced Mutatron. Do do do. The Advanced Mutatron is better. Take my word for it. Um, the cool thing about the Advanced Mutatron is some bees uh, have 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 multiple offspring levels. Um, so for example, if you look at cultivated bees, you'll see that common and cultivated can give you noble. However, common and cultivated can also give you diligent and believe it or not, common and cultivated uh, can give you a third type of bee, which is somewhere along here. Do, do, do. I don't see it, but it's around here somewhere. Um, you can get other types of bees from common and cultivated. So like common and cultivated is like the easiest example because there's like multiple. Um, noble is one of them and diligence the other. Industrious is the line that you usually get to with common and cultivated. But long story short, um, there's three different types of bees you can get from combining common and cultivated. If you use a normal mutatron, I think it's random which one you get from that. With an advanced mutatron, you get to choose which of the three bee species you're gonna get. Now these things require power and, you might have guessed, mutagen. Cool. So this guy's gonna pop up here. He's gonna chill right there. And we might as well get a servo for pumping liquids out of stuff. And fluid ducts. We'll go with... You know what, let's do signal and plated, why not? We'll try and keep this looking nice. So if we uh, removed you two, and we did that, you look like you already emptied out your mutagen, which is cool, and dumped it all straight into the advanced mutatron. Perfect. Um, so by doing that, we now have a machine that we can choose to breed bees with. So I'm gonna combine, uh, my forest princess is ignoble, so she ain't so hot. Uh, but my Meadows Princess is pristine. That sounds perfect. So I'm going to combine you uh, with a Forest Drone. And that tells me I can get a common queen out of it. Great. The only other thing we need in order for this to work uh, is Genetics Lab Warrior. I'm going to request uh, a stack of those because we're going to need a bunch of it. Cool. And when I do this and choose common, it's going to combine them. Now there's a chance that this will fail. And if it fails you'd lose your princess and drone. So keep that in mind. Uh, I guess that's kind of the balancing of it, right? It might fail, and if that happens, you're in bad luck. Uh, let's take a look now at our, do we have our B-Elizer thingy? Oh, here it is, sweet. So I didn't even need a servo, that's cool. So we have a common drone. It's a purebred common. So those of you who have done bees before know that sometimes you might get like common as your active trait and forest as your inactive trait, which would make it a common bee, but it's a potential that when it dies off, you'll get some forest bee, like some meadows bees or some forest bees or something like that, right? So when you do it this way, guaranteed chance to, to not really have much of a problem. Sweet. Uh, let's go put this bee outside and let her live and then die. Uh, by the way, common bees, just as an FYI, uh, typically wind up, um, as we can see here, uh, your common bee usually has a pretty long lifespan. Oh, it's shorter. Okay, cool. Well, then we looked out. Cultivated has like the best lifespan. It's like super short. 
Uh, but we're gonna go put this bee outside um, by these things. And there's bad guys out here, so we're gonna enjoy shooting them with our exploding guns. <laughs> and uh, bees uh, come and go. So uh, the bee is already a queen, so there's no mating it with the forest and, and drone. Like it, it mated it, it mated a common queen, and it gave you the queen. It didn't give you a princess and drone, which is cool. So we're gonna let this bee uh, hang out here, and hopefully she doesn't have any problems. And in a moment, we'll come back when she has died off. So believe it or not, that didn't take too long. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is breed them again. I'm actually gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the automation upgrade in there. Wow, that is really, okay, that was just combining, right. Uh, I'm gonna put the automation upgrade in there. I'm gonna let that go through a couple cycles because I'd like to have a few uh, bees of the common variety um, while we, when, when we move on to the next step here. So guys, we've uh, gone ahead and gotten a decent number of common drones here. So we've got seven common drones uh, we've got a pristine queen here just, you know, doing her production stuff, which is cool. Let's do two things with these drones now. So first off, I'd like to get to the next tier of drone. And the best way to do that is by combining another tier one princess, Mystical Counts, uh, even though it's from a different mod, uh, with a common drone. And that will get us a cultivated queen of pristine stock, which is cool. Totally clutch. Uh, assuming that this survives, yes, yes she did. Nice, so let's see what these stats look like. Uh, she's gonna have the shortest lifespan and fast production. These are two highly uh, valuable traits because lifespan determines how long the thing lives. And if it lives for a very short period of time, uh, we're gonna be able to breed it much more quickly. That's awesome. Also fast production, this means it's gonna produce uh, honeycombs much more quickly than your other bees that we've encountered thus far. Now there are, I think, faster and fastest production, but fast, is by far better than uh, what I think we've we've been dealing with, uh, which is you know something along the lines of slower production. So like that's bad. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw my cultivated queen in here with the light upgrade and the lifespan upgrade and get lots and lots of cultivated drones. So that's step one. Like let's get more cultivated drones. Let's get more uh, common drones. All kinds of good and important stuff happening there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is start stealing some of the attributes of these drones. So we've been looking a little bit at attributes like uh, this bee here that has the shorter and slower production. Um, that's not a great attribute to get. However, that fast production would be nice. Now, if you're doing vanilla forestry without all kinds of fun gender street things, then you have to do lots and lots of breeding to get a nice bee with the proper uh, attributes. And it takes a long time and it takes a lot of effort uh, and it's hurtful and painful, personally. Uh, I mean, doing it once is kind of fun, like, hey, neat, you know, I did it, but it's not terribly, like, really easy to automate, and it does really take a long, long time um, for your bees to get to that point. So, Gendistry, once again, comes to your rescue. Uh, so, in uh, Gendistry here, we have a nifty little dude. A genetic Sampler, I believe, is what we're looking for. Yeah, that sounds like the machine we're going to want. Uh, so, in order to get a genetic sampler, uh, we can go ahead and snag one of these dudes, and we've got most of the other stuff we need. Let's go upstairs. Do, 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 do. Upstairs. Uh, we'll break this thing. We'll put this guy here. We'll get ourselves a genetic sampler. Now, I think it just needs power to do genetic sampler. Uh, the other things it will need, though, are from Gendistry. Uh, we're going to need some blank gene samples. I'm going to get about 20 of those dudes. Uh, and the other thing you're going to need is uh, some more genetics labware, uh, which I will get a stack of, which is pretty cheap relatively. Uh, so that goes in and the blank gene sample goes in. The way the genetic sampler works is actually really, really simple. What it's going to do is you're going to place uh, preferably drones. You could put princesses in there, but I wouldn't recommend it because that's a big waste. Princesses are rare. Drones are common. You get lots of extra drones when you meet when you breed bees, you get no extra princesses. So totally good thing to burn your drones on. What it does is it picks one of these attributes or one of these attributes. I think that's it. Yeah, one of these or one of these. So like it could pick the uh, nocturnal attribute, whether it's nocturnal or not. It could pick the cave dwelling attribute. It could pick the climate attribute. It could pick the production attribute. It might pick the species attribute. And that's kind of the one that I'm going for with common. Uh, what I like to do when I'm doing bees is um, go ahead and just throw a common drone in there and it's gonna process a little bit. It's gonna chew up that drone and it's gonna get one of the attributes of that drone and stick it onto a gene sample. Cool, and in this one we got, wow, we got extremely lucky on our very first try. Go Direwolf, well that is cool. Um, so that's super awesome. 
The reason I'm excited about that is I just got my uh, species drones. So what I'm going to do um, is keep somewhere nearby uh, all the bee species that we like. So common is a bee species that we like. Um, so in the future, we can use this bee sample with species common to take any bee in the world and turn it into a common bee using some machinery. That's really awesome that we happen to get that. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a few more common drones in there and see what kind of other attributes we get. There's really no other attributes that I want, but um, I'm excited, so therefore I'm doing the thing. Cool, we got temperature tolerance none. So uh, if we didn't want our bees to have a temperature tolerance, I have no idea on what planet we would want this, this, this thing to be, um, but you never know. Um, and we got territory average, another attribute that I really couldn't care less about. Um, but hey, it's an attribute, so that's cool. And uh, this guy is cave dwelling false. So if you don't want your bees to be able to dwell in caves, you could go ahead and apply that. Most bees can't dwell in caves, and the ones that can, it's kind of a nice thing. So if you decide that you don't want your um, your nifty uh, thing anymore, you can smelt these dudes in theory. You used to be able to smelt them. Can they not go into a regular furnace? That's weird. Why you know not go into... I thought the redstone furnace could smelt all the things that vanilla furnaces can smelt. Okay, cool. Let's, um, do I have a furnace furnace? I don't know, but we're about to get one. Do we have some speed upgrades? Totally do. Hey, uh, I think we could probably just stick this guy. I can put him upstairs. Yeah, let's do that. You can, you can come upstairs with me. Uh, you're going to go right here um, with your speed upgrades. And we'll run some power over to you. Because we're nice guys like that. Uh, this goes in there. Cool. And it smelts, and we get a blank gene sample. Uh, hey, that's a cool dupe bug. Whoops. <laughs> I wonder if that happens in vanilla furnaces. I also wonder if that happens with other items. Please don't tell me that happens with other items, because I'll be really upset. And I'll have to go yell at Tema. Okay, well, at least that doesn't happen. Because <laughs> that would be a really bad dude bug. Uh, I wonder if that happens in vanilla furnaces. Should have held on to that charcoal, huh? Just curious now at this point uh, whether or not that happens. So I'm going to need a new bee species trait to test this on. Uh, so we'll go ahead and throw a Meadows drone in there. It really doesn't matter. Um, for the purposes of this test, what I'm doing. Do, 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 do. Cool, temperature tolerance none. Yeah, I definitely don't want that. If it was the species, I might have considered keeping it. So I really wonder, I can't imagine that this is going to happen in a vanilla furnace, right? Like, there's no way. Alright, you guys found a very minor dupe bug through this video. Don't abuse it. Weird. I'm going to have to report that. That must be some kind of conflict between Gendistry and Extra Utilities. What that conflict is, I couldn't even tell you. But hey, that's how you um, erase your gene samples. So if you get to the point where you're like, hey, I don't need this gene sample like the ones we just did, totally a way to go. So let's pop outside and uh, see what's up with our common and cultivated bees. Because they should have had some progress in between uh, while we were doing stuff. So we got three common drones in that time frame. And you don't have an automation upgrade in you. So you didn't do anything that I would want. But that's okay. We'll mate you two. And we'll bring this guy home in hopes that we get something nice off of this drone. Um, so let's uh, do the thing. And cross our fingers. And hey, maybe we'll get something good. Maybe we won't. Do, 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 do. We got never sleeps false. So that is the, um, you know, works at nighttime B trait. Uh, so yeah, I should probably just like void that after a while. Or I should put a vanilla furnace up here. I don't know, it's fast. Vanilla furnaces are slow. I'll figure out what to do about that. Um, yeah, so let's let the bees do their beely duty and we'll come back and see what the next step is. So keeping in mind that our uh, common bee was running for quite a while without cult without cultivated running. Uh, this guy's got eight drones and four combs. This guy's already overtaken him with nine drones and nine combs. So we totally have uh, obviously a difference in the lifespan and the production 
of this bee. So I'm going to take these nine cultivated drones, leave my queen in there, who, by the way, when she dies, will leave, you know, a drone and a princess behind and she'll continue running. And we're going to go run all these drones uh, through the sequencer here. So basically, um, almost, yeah, most of them, that should be fine. Um, yeah, and we'll see what we get. Cool. So we'll be back in a minute when we see what we get. Hey, so good news. We just got bee species cultivated. That's cool. Uh, so we totally now have the common and the cultivated species. And now I'm going to let the rest of them run through because I wouldn't mind getting those really nice stats like short lifespan and fast production speed. Because the fast production speed, once we get to a bee that's actually making something we care about, will be super cool to have. Uh, and you can just burn through here. And eventually what I'm going to do is set up some kind of automation method for this. Um, and I'm probably going to have to deal with the fact that the input is bad, right? So uh, we're going to have to figure that out, this whole weird duping thing that's happening. Not sure what that's about. Out of curiosity, if I remove the speed upgrades, does that prevent that from accidentally happening? Like, it's going to be slower, but I'm just curious if that has anything to do with it. Nope. Still no good. Uh, never sleeps false. Don't care about that so much. And yes, I realize I'm duping blank gene samples, but frankly, they cost me tin and iron. I'm not going to worry about that. Flowering slowest, also a boring attribute. At the end of the day, like, a little bit of extra tin and redstone isn't going to go far. Do I need to look at my, my system and show you? Effect none. That's kind of a nice one to have. Um, later on, we'll find some bees give positive area of effects, and some bees give negative area of effects. And the ability to turn off the negative ones with an effect none will be kind of nice to have. Cool. So we've now got the common and the cultivated species templates, right? And that's pretty slick. Uh, we're going to let these guys continue to run here, but, uh, well, we've already got common. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the automation upgrade here and let's look in Gendistry. There is one item from Gendistry that's really useful and is gated behind bees. And that is the production upgrade. This makes bees produce more stuff. However, in order to get that, we need Royal Jelly, which only comes from Imperial Bees or Classical, apparently, which is from Binny's Extra Bees. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to check out how to get Imperial. We need Majestic and Noble Princesses. Majestic uh, comes from Noble and Cultivated, and Noble is one of the options from Common and Cultivated. So this is a, a bee species line. Usually there's about three of them, right? You start with like a, 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 a bee that comes from the Common Cultivated mix, right? And then it you know, upgrades um, to Majestic, and then you combine the two, Majestic and Noble, to get Imperial. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna take my uh, common uh, queen, and I'm gonna grab um, one, well, we'll grab two cultivated. Or one of them can go into the grinder, and we can hope for a fast species, something or other. Uh, but the Advanced Mutatron can now combine our common and cultivated, and here's your options, Noble or Diligent. I thought there was three tiers of bees that you could get off this, right? Oh well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just two. But uh, noble is what we want, we said, right? So we'll like let that thing happen. And now we have a noble bee. That's pristine. Sweet. So some people feel like Gendistry is a little bit cheaty because it makes bees a lot easier than they would otherwise be. True. However, um, it's not a complicated thing to do. It's not easily automatable. Um, and... It just it's a matter of sitting around and waiting and hoping for luck. And Gendistry takes the luck and waiting out of bees. That's kind of what I like about it. So uh, we'll come over here with our common drone. We'll stick our noble queen in here and we'll let her do her thing. So she's going to produce uh, uh, um, stuff for us now, and that's cool. And we've got a few more cultivateds. Oh, wait, hold on. Don't want to take all the cultivateds. That's a bad thing. Make sure that there's at least one drone that leaves in there. And uh, <laughs> off we go. Sweet. Okay, good deal. And we got flowers, flowers. That seems oxymoronic, but remember, like, some bees can have cactus as their flower. So flowers, cactus is what you'd see for modest. Um, the nether bees require nether wart, for example. Sweet. Speed fast. That's, that's an attribute that I want. Speed fast. Speed is the one that uh, controls how much it uh, produces. So that's a good attribute to have. Nice. Sweet and sweeter. Uh, temperature tolerance none is not an exciting one. Uh, and finally, we got tolerates rainfall. So that's also not exciting. But it's, uh, eventually, we'll be able to get um, bees that can tolerate the rain and don't mind it being dark. And that'll be exciting because then we won't need to worry about those light upgrades. So guys, our noble bee has died off. Sweet. Uh, that's kind of a nice thing for me. 
Uh, you know what else I should grab while I'm over there, though, is a common drone. Yeah, totally. So remember, Noble Bee gets upgraded. Uh, Noble plus Cultivated becomes Majestic, so that's what we're going to want. Uh, so I'm going to snag. You can see it's raining, so my bee's all upset about the rain, but that's okay. We've got plenty of Cultivated Drones that I can use. So, in theory, I should be able to combine Noble with Cultivated, and that'll get me the Majestic that I need. Cool. And I'm going to hang on to these two Noble drones, the extra ones, because I'm going to combine Majestic with Noble um, once this bee dies off. Um, while we're here, I guess it wouldn't be a bad idea to get some of these bad boys. So I'm actually going to teach you how to do, not Humidifier, Seal Upgrade. What was it? Yeah, Seal Upgrade. That makes it so that you don't care about the rain. Where it's raining now, at least. So seal upgrade times three, missing beeswax. Oh, cool. We should process you guys and get some beeswax, huh? Excellent. So out we'll go and Again, this is an introduction to bees, right? So I'm getting you guys familiar with how these things work. Probably the next episode, what I'd like to focus more towards. So you're unhappy because it's raining, but if I throw that in there, you're good. Same for you, and possibly, yeah, I mean, you're in a desert biome, so it's not, not really raining there, is it? It's raining here, but not there. Uh, so in the next episodes, we'll go much more heavy into automation and um, working towards getting the bees that we want, specifically uh, the gas tier bees, right? These guys are ghastly bees. They have a 10% chance of creating a gas tier, but that's going to be boosted when we get, um, you know, the the um, all the stat upgrades that we can on this guy, right? Um, and in order to get ghastly bees, we have a long path of bees to go through, right? Ethereal needs supernatural and arcane, which needs enchanted and charmed and charms and cultivated and aldrich and da -da 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 -da. But trust me, it would take like weeks to get to this bee without Gendistry. And with Gendistry, oh yeah, it's going to be um, still a lot of work, uh, but also a little bit more fun and more like, hey, I get to play with machines and automation and less so I get to watch bees die and fall asleep. So that's where we're at. So in theory, we should very soon have the top tier B that I'm going for, which will allow me to get um, even better upgrades in my machines. Uh, so I'm just waiting for this guy to die off. So we'll be back in like a minute or two when that happens. And then we combine him with the Noble, and uh, what we'll have is an Imperial B, which is capable of producing Royal Jelly. Nice. And we'll stick that one into an automation apiary. Cool. Um, Nice. So we'll be back in about a minute or two. I'm going to probably take the automation upgrade here. I don't want you running any more modest. You're pretty done. Sweet. Good to go. So uh, sometimes I like to hang on to bees uh, just in case I ever want to use them again. Uh, for that, we should get a pretty proper chest. Iron might be nice to have. We'll stick them right on top of this one. This is where we'll put extra bees like the nobles that I didn't use. Uh, and some of the Majestics, just in case at some point I want to use them. If I wanted to, I could try genetic sampling them, but I'll probably wind up destroying them, and the chances of getting the species trait ain't so high. So uh, Majestic and Noble will get me Imperial. So cross your fingers, because at this point, uh, if I got genetic waste, I'd be a little upset, but not the end of the world. Hey, it worked. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. So now we've got Imperial Bees. That's nice, because that's going to get us Royal Jelly, which allows us to have production upgrades, which allows us to get even more resources out of any bees that we that we wind up making. Uh, so that uh, thus far concludes, and that's Light and Seal and Lifespan, and uh, where's my automation upgrade goes in there. Uh, thus far concludes the basics of how to mess with bees. So now you guys uh, who've never used or played with bees before should have a pretty good understanding of how to uh, combine two bee species. Again, fully using industry. Uh, uh, Gendistry, right? Had we used uh, not Gendistry machines, it would have um, been just a little bit different and a lot longer and a little bit more painful. Um, but yes, so for now, it is wrapping up point. So that was my sending off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and have a little bit more fun playing with unautomating bees. Uh, I'm going to look into um, a little bit of automation regarding if, if I can, I'm going to try and automate them. If it's possible, it may not be. There's some research I need to do. And then what we're going to do is uh, 
play around with some other things. Uh, we won't be on bees for long. It'll probably just be a few episodes. So those of you who I know uh, exist out there who aren't huge fans of bees, it's not going to be very long before we switch. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to drop off all these extra drones that I have. And heck, even I'll drop off that forest princess. Why not? And yeah, we'll take, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back next time. For now, you know, take it easy.